this is the second part of this double lesson. Um, and I'm going to continue with the same problem that we had before to kind of sharpen a little idea. Hope yeah, you guys can see it. So let's work with the same example. I've put 100 Rand in the bank. And every year I got an interest of, what did we say, 10%. I chose easy numbers. And I'm comparing how much money I have after three years, whether I use simple interest or compound interest. Well, not me, whether the bank decides. And we noticed that if I had, uh, if I got simple interest, I will, after three years, I will get 130 Rand. That means 10 Rand every year, okay? The compound interest, uh, it started the same, but after the third year, I got 133,1 Rand. So compound is beta, right? Now they ask me, how much interest did I make? And how much interest did I make every year? So what does that mean, interest? As I was already saying, interest is the amount that I made, okay, or the amount that eventually I have to, if I borrowed money, the, amount, the extra money I have to pay. So in this case, you know, I got 130, it's not here, I got 130 after three years, but it didn't start from nothing. I didn't have to put 100 in the beginning, so I didn't make 130 rand. How much money did I make? I did 130 minus 100, okay, which is equal 30 rand. That's the interest, that's the amount that I earned, okay without earning anything, okay? the money just sits in the bank. Compound, well, in this case, 133,1 minus 100 is a little bit more, 33,1 rand. Now, they might ask me, how much interest did I make every year, per year? Okay, so in this case, okay, I made 30 rand in three years, so every year I made 10 rand. And that is absolutely true. Every year I made an extra 10 rand. Over here, 33,1 over three years. I need my calculator, and it's going to be 11 point something, I think. 33,1 divided by three is 11,03 11, rand. We normally will work with two decimal places, because that's sense, you know, I can't have a third decimal place. Now, so obviously we made more per year than there. Now you're gonna watch out with this. It's not true that I made 11 Rand every year because we saw the first year also made 10 Rand. The second year was a little bit more. The third year I actually made more than 11 Rand. So, so the interest earned per year in compound interest is really an average because every year I made more. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Okay, so for our second example, I guess, uh, we're going to look at some some time where I borrow money. So obviously then I have to repay. It's a bit not a nice situation. And also it will be a little bit of a difference. So um, hang on, I'm going to do simple compound. I will do both. Okay. So let's say I borrowed a certain amount of money and I don't know what that is. In other words, in this case, the P, okay, the P is unknown. The amount of money that I borrowed in the beginning, I don't know. Okay. Now I borrow that money. After 10 years, I had to pay back 10,000 Rand. So what's the 10,000 Rand? The 10,000 Rand is your A. That's the amount of money that I had to pay back. And I also told that the interest is 12%. So that actually shouldn't be either R, okay? It's 12%. That means I, if R is 12%, then I, which is the decimal, divided by 100 is 0 0.12. And it was 10 years. That's your N, isn't it? Now, I want to find out what is P. P went in two cases. One where I actually use simple interest and one when I use compound interest. Let's start with the simple. Okay? So we'll start with the simple case. Okay? They will tell you, they must tell you the question whether you use simple or, or, or not simple. So I'll write it down here. So the way you do it, just like in science, you substitute in the equation everything you know and then you start rearranging. So we know what the A is. The A is 10,000. The P we don't, so we just write P. 1 plus I, we said it's 0, 0,12. And it was time 10 years. Okay? Now you put that into the calculator. You know, you could. Okay? But actually, you can also do it in your head. Let's just work that a little bit. You can obviously do it in the calculator. It's not a problem. You have to work the bracket. So 0, 0,12 times 10 is 1, 2. Is that right? Yeah. 1, 2 plus 1 will be 2, 2. I just want to make sure I got it right. 1, 2 plus 1 is 2, 2. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Now we want to find out P. Okay. 10,000. I'll write that, yeah. Divide by 2, comma 2. For that, we will need the calculator. Okay. So, show, 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 show. 10,000. Divide it by 2.2. And I get four five four five comma four five. Four five four five comma four five rand. Again, two decimal places. So that's the initial money that I borrowed. Check this out, okay? Four thousand five hundred so rand. For ten years I have to pay ten thousand. Okay, let's make some space for the compound. Okay. So a compound. Again, the amount of money that I get in the beginning is ten thousand rand. The P we don't know, so it's all the same. 1 plus I is 0, 1, 2. But remember, instead of timing it by N, we have to do it exponent. And it's a power P. Okay? For that, I will need the calculator. Okay? So I will write 10,000 rand equal P time. Now, um, again, you can just put this whole thing in the calculator. I would first, you know, you do the bracket. You can do that in your head. 1 comma 1 2 but power in so 1 comma 1 2 instead of time in we're powering it by 10 and I get 3 comma 1 0 5 now okay this is a really important point uh, the, the the answer that I get is 0, 3 comma 1 0 5 8 4 pa, 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 pa. now if I round it up to two decimal places 3 comma 1 2 I will not get the full answer. I've rounded it up halfway through the lesson, through the exercise. We spoke about that in trig. So it's better to do like that. It's better to do it like this. Let me just show you. So I can do that in my head. 1 comma 1, 2 power 10. Just write it down like that. So far, I haven't used the calculator. Now, I want to find out P. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide by this thing. So 1 comma 1, 2 power 10. I didn't put it in the calculator yet. So I'm going to write P is equal to 10,000 divided by 1 comma 1, 2 power 10. I haven't rounded up yet. That's why we don't want to use the calculator. Only until the end. Okay? That now I will put in the calculator. I'll write 10,000 divided by 1 comma 1, 2 to the power of 10. And if the Hopefully the calculator does both math correctly and you will do the power before the divide, which you will, okay? I get 3,219. 3,219,73 rand. Now, I'm just going to write down what was the answer for the simple. Check this out, okay? Borrowed a certain amount of money. Interest was the same, okay? This is the amount of money that, and, and eventually I had to pay 10,000 rand. So I paid the same amount. If I borrowed the money under simple interest uh, uh, conditions, then I only borrowed, uh, borrowed 4,500. In the compound scenario, I borrowed way less. So you can see how compound really hurts you if you're not repaying it. Okay? So I'm going to uh, pause it. Oh, hang on. Oh, there is a friend here. I gotta introduce you. Shalom, uh, Professor Pupik. My new name. I'm, I'm just, he doesn't speak Hebrew. This is a good friend of mine. He doesn't speak, sorry, English. So let me just talk to him. Okay, Professor Pupik, he, he, he's just come all the way from Israel and he doesn't really speak English. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have to speak to him in Hebrew. But he wanted to show you something, well, through me. Look, he, he, he's basically saying, I'm just going to put him here. Say goodbye to Professor Pupik. Bye -bye. Okay, so he, he's noticing that. We, to get that answer of 3219, we substitute the equations, uh, the, the, the A and the R and the N over here, and we got the answer. No problem, and I would recommend you carrying doing it. But I want to show you what he noticed, okay, which we'll have to use later on. Okay? So he said, look, instead of substituting the numbers, okay, as we did, and then rearranging, we could have rearranged the equation. Okay? I'll rearrange it like this. If I want to know the peak, 
and I know the A, then I can, to get rid of that, 1 plus I power N, I can divide it by 1 plus, uh, just write it down here, and I'll erase it. So I can divide it by 1 plus I power N. Divide it. Now, when you divide it by a, a certain exponent, it's like, well, I'll just write it down like this. Hang on. So P is going to be equal to A divided by 1 plus I power N. Okay, so far it's just simple algebra. So now you remember from the rules of the exponent, if I have an exponent in a power in the denominator, okay, it will be the same as writing a times 1 plus i to the power of, you remember? What happens to that plus n when it's in the denominator? It's the same as if it was minus n. Okay? And that's what he wanted to show you. Okay? So I'll just erase that. And we have another equation. If you want to find A, use this equation. If you want to find out P, then can you, you can directly use that equation. And if we do that, I'll just show you what we've done here. We want to find out P. That's not a problem. We just got to say 1 plus 0 comma 1, 2 to the... Oh, sorry, I forgot the A. So P equal A. I forgot the A here. That's why I forgot the A there. Sorry, guys. So I've got P equal A times 1 plus I power minus N. So A is going to be our 10,000 times 1 plus 0 from 1 or 2 power minus 10. And that's equal to 10,000 times 1 comma 1, 2 to the power of minus 10. And that is obviously the same thing. See, those two expressions are the same thing. You get the same answer. So you've got two choices. Either you just remember these two equations, substitute them, and then rearrange, which is what I recommend science students to do. Or you can start remembering that if you want the P, the calculate the P and not the A, okay, you're going to do a, a, a negative N there. Okay? And put the A there. It's up to you, but at some point, you really need to know where that equation comes from. I'm going to stop here. And we're going to have a third part for this uh, lesson afterwards. See you later.